This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. The Lebanese feuding factions reach an agreement in Qatar. The Syrians and the Israelis are talking peace with the help of Turkey. What's going on and why are traditional mediators like the U.S. absent from the negotiating tables? Answers to these questions and more on Link TV's Mosaic Intelligence Report. Two important stories have emerged this week from the Middle East, and for a change, both had to do with peace. On Wednesday, Israel and Syria, in what appeared to be coordinated announcements, said that they had begun indirect talks in Turkey, the first confirmation in eight years of negotiations between the long-time enemies. The conditions are not yet right to put the two parties at one table. However, the negotiations continue separately through Turkey's mediation with the Israeli side and the Syrian side to facilitate a face-to-face -face meeting. We in Turkey are doing our best to prepare the proper atmosphere and to make the negotiations succeed. I would like to present a gift in honor of the Doha Accord. I announce in this day and in the name of the opposition and into the sitting in central Beirut. Also on Wednesday, the tiny Gulf state of Qatar scored a diplomatic coup by pulling off a deal to end Lebanon's protracted crisis, successfully shepherding the negotiations between feuding Lebanese factions to end months of political turmoil and violence. For the past year, the Saudis have been trying to mediate between the feuding parties in Lebanon. However, they have failed because Saudi Arabia is considered an interested party due to its strong ties with the Hariri family and the position it has taken against Hezbollah. On the other hand, Qatar has good relations with all sides in Lebanon and has the money to back it up. The gas-rich state has invested millions of dollars in major property development projects in Syria. It enjoys good relations with the Islamic Republic of Iran and has recently invited the Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad to become the first Iranian head of state to attend the annual summit of the Gulf Cooperation Council in Doha. At the same time, Qatar has remained a key ally of Washington, hosting the Al Udaid Air Base, the largest U.S. military facility in the region. Turkey, meanwhile, has emerged as a key player in quietly brokering initial peace moves between Israel and Syria. Similarly to Qatar, Turkey enjoys great relations with both Syria and Israel on economic, political and security levels. It is hard to compare the future of these two breakthroughs in peace negotiations, especially when considering the rocky road that both Syria and Israel will be facing. Nevertheless, the actions of Turkey and Qatar suggest that the key players in the region are now moving away from traditional mediators such as Saudi Arabia and the United States and are finding accommodations in countries where they find common ground. Just today, deposed Palestinian Prime Minister Ismail Haniyeh called for a conference in Qatar to resolve the impasse between Fatah and Hamas. Don't be surprised to see Qatar become a player in the Palestinian-Israeli peace talks. Just recently, Israeli Foreign Minister Zevi Levni made her first visit to Qatar. This Arab nation does not have official diplomatic ties with Israel. But in the fast-shifting sands of the Arabian deserts, alliances can change quickly. I'm Jamal Dajani for the Mosaic Intelligence Report. To learn more about this program or to share your thoughts, visit us at linktv.org slash mosaic. This program was brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. television network devoted to global and national news with uncompromising documentaries and diverse cultural programs, programs which connect you to the world.